Visit sayaright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. We're going to remove a portion of the cover on this RV and show you how to make window shades. Hi, Eric Grant with Sayright. Today we're going to be making a window screen, and this window screen has snaps. Now this snap doesn't drill into your RV, this is on an RV. It uses a special adhesive snap called a SNAD. So we'll show you how that's used in this video. We also have a separate video showing you how to make these window screens with a magnet, uh, though the magnets are a little bit more expensive. So if you'd like to see that, there'll be a link at the top right corner for that video. Let's get started and show you how to make these window screens with snaps. These screens will help to cool your RV on sunny days while providing some privacy on the side that is less lit. In the daylight hours, you can still see out from inside the RV, but from the outside, you cannot see in. The first step is patterning with Duraskrim pattern material. First thing we're going to do is patterning. We put Duraskrim pattern material up and we just use some masking tape to tape it so that it's nice and taut over the window. And I can feel the edge of the window here, so I'm just going to take a marker and mark around the perimeter. And you definitely want to mark out so you know which side is out. So at the corners here, um, this is all glass. I could put a, a snad there. This is glass. Here in the middle, I do have an obstacle here. It's not in the middle but I want to mark where that metal is because I don't really want to put a snad there. So there's an obstacle that is here. We'll probably put the snad someplace in this location and down here in this location. So at the corners, so one, two, three, four, five, six snads, uh, you could put more in as well. Um, we didn't mark a line across the top here. We actually marked a line here and over here and we'll join that when we get to the loft table and you can see where I patterned. I patterned basically here and then across to here. Okay, let's take this in and we'll uh, make our shade. Snads can be installed on the glass or the surrounding surfaces around the window. It's your choice. Our pattern's on the table. The outside is facing up and we're gonna strike a line from uh, this edge to this edge that we marked because uh, it was difficult with all the hardware that was there. So we're gonna connect these two. We're gonna simply cut this out with scissors and I'm gonna cut on the outside of the black line to make it a teeny bit big. We're gonna do this around the entire perimeter. Now that we have a pattern, it's time to pattern the vinyl mesh fabric available from Sailrite. We put some weighted sandbags on here. You can either mark around the perimeter and I suggest the white scry ball if you want to do that, or simply take your scissors and make sure the pattern is laying flat and just trim around it. And we're going right to the edge of the pattern material. We'll do this all around the perimeter. This is a vinyl mesh fabric with a polyester core. It's, in other words, it's uh, encapsulated with vinyl. Um, it is uh, called Textiline. We also have another brand called Pfeiffer Tex Plus. Uh, this is simply the black color, works great for shades, provides some privacy. Wherever the sun is the brightest, you will not see in. When installing fasteners, usually it's reinforced with three layers of the fabric. However, two layers for this application should work fine. Now we do have to make some patches uh, for each one of the snap locations. So I'm using a clear acrylic ruler and I'm just going to mark it at three inches with my scry ball. Uh, pencil white and we'll just make several of them so three inches um, is there so we make sure this lines on top of this these clear acrylic rulers are just awesome now I've got a perfect rectangle and then I just measure over three inches making sure that it's straight but a line keep doing this So we are cutting them out with scissors. Uh, we are going to make rounded corners with a can and then we're going to touch the edges with a hot knife to keep it from unraveling. We found a cone of thread that actually has a, a three inch bottom and so I just line it up here and I'll use my scry ball here 
and mark the curve so they're all going to be the same like that and we'll do that to each one of these three inch by three inch squares. Now we'll trim this off with scissors neatly and then we'll touch the edges with a hot knife. We're going to do that with all of them. Nice. I put my tempered cutting glass on the table which makes a great surface area for the hot knife and all I want to do is touch the edges. I don't have to touch this edge because this edge is going to be uh, basically sewing into the binding. And this keeps the uh, f uh, sometimes the polyester that sometimes shows uh, from showing. So it just kind of seals that and if it is showing it chopped, it uh, conceals it completely. And we're going to do that with all of them. Next, we'll sew those reinforcing patches onto the window shade. This is the outside surface for us, but this is a rectangle, so it really doesn't have an outside surface. Because of that, this fabric doesn't have a right side or a wrong side. Um, if this had uh, a shape that determined which is an outside and which is the inside, I would put these on the underside. So I'd put them on like this. We're going to take this over to the sewing machine, and we're going to sew it on so basically they're flush here, and these will stick out. We'll trim those after they're sewn in place. So the rounded por portion goes on the inside. So that'll be at all the corners. And then at the middle position, we're gonna take our pattern and determine where this one goes. Uh, it'll just be flush with this edge like this and binding will be put on later. So here's our pattern. Remember we marked for an obstacle here. I want the, uh, the snad or the snap to be installed here. So the best way to do this is to fold it in half and find out if that obstacle is in the middle. Um, Cause this is a, a, a rectangle and you can see that the obstacle is not in the middle. So which means I can easily fold this in half to determine where those patches will go uh, in the, and I'll put them in exactly in the middle and just mark that fold. And then I'll do it over here too. Okay, and then we'll lift this up. And now we know where this center patch goes for the snap. Okay, here's the middle position. Here's our snap. Uh, we're going to just put it, that in the middle. And what I'll do first is I'll actually sew down the straight edge because it's easier to put it on. We're going to have binding here, so I'm going to sew very, very close to this because I don't want this stitch to show up. So I'm very close to that edge. And uh, we have our st stitch set at six millimeters. I'm not going to do any reversing here because this is going to be covered with a binding. When I get to the corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bury the needle. So I'm almost at the corner. I'm going to use a reverse lever just to get that needle right at that edge. There we go. And I'm going to lift my foot and I'm going to pivot around and I'll actually scroll up this fabric a little bit to get it to go underneath the arm of the sewing machine. It just makes it easier to maneuver. Like that. And now we've turned and we'll come down this side. We can easily take this turn, make sure it's sitting flat. Just go slow. And if you need to make any major turn, like here we have to uh, make a little bit of sharper turn, bury your needle. That way you can pivot on that buried needle. And I'll, I'll, I'll uh, fold the fabric in, it won't hurt it, to get it to go underneath that ar arm easily. So now we can continue. get that fabric underneath that arm. Oops, too much of a turn. Now when I get to this side, I am going to do some reversing here. Just to lock that in place. And that is installed. We're going to do the same thing to the middle position on the other side. This is the underside. Here's a corner and we're going to put this on so it goes extends into that corner with this edge flush. These will be dog ears that will be cut off here in a minute but I'm still going to sew across this edge 
just to secure it in place. This will be covered with binding. Now, might as well just, just turn around, keep going and go around this, uh, this edge out here. So I'm gonna basically transition to that edge. At the needle buried, I'm gonna pivot, hold the assembly down flat, so up this side. And we gotta start making our turn. Okay, scrunch your fabric in there, roll it, whatever, you, whatever your pleasure is. Need to make turns, bury the needle. I'm just gonna scrunch the fabric this time. I'm holding the patch so that it's flat as I sew it on, so I don't get any bubbles. I gotta get this fabric in, in there, make sure everything's flat. A couple stitches at a time. When you do rounded things, this is just the reality of it. Take your time. Sometimes you have to lift your, your um, presser foot up and get the fabric to turn to, to suit your next stitch. There we are, we're to the straightaway. And when I get down here, we're going to be in the binding, so I'm just going to do some reversing there. All right, we'll do that to all the corner patches, and we'll have them installed. Make sure you put them on the same side as all the patches. Now, we should probably turn this over so you can see where, you're, where you need to trim. We've got plenty of stitches down here. So we're just going to trim off these dog ears to match the screen and we'll do this at all of the corners. There we go. And now we sew the binding around the perimeter. When using a centerfold binding at 7 8 inch, uh, some people use a 1 inch binder, but I actually like to use a 3 quarter inch binder. It actually compresses it um, slightly, but uh, I don't have one leg being shorter than the other underneath the uh, fabric assembly. So I'm going to use a three quarter inch binder with my centerfold binding. So this binding uh, fits very snugly in here because it's a little bit on the big side. So you often have to use a screwdriver to push it through to get it to the end. There we go. And you definitely want to sew off some before you start sewing on your project to make sure that you're happy with, with the way it's performing. So let's see what we got. Okay, the presser foot is coming very close to the edge. It's right against this edge. That actually looks good. It's not really touching the binder. Let's see what the sti where the stitch is. Oh yeah, the stitch is, uh, it's a little bit too much in there. So what we need to do is we need to back this off, going this way a little bit towards the throat of the sewing machine to get that stitch closer to the edge. Let's try this. It's touching the front of the foot a little bit. I'm going to move it back just a skosh. But the stitch is definitely in a better spot, maybe a little bit too close. Let's go a little bit closer. There we go. Okay, we have our binding in. We're going to start someplace in the middle position and we're going to first get it in the middle there we go and start it right about here make sure that the fabric is pushed well into the exiting point of the binder no reason to do any reversing because we are going to be sewing over this spot so push your assembly into the, that point see this part is is kinked out and that is to help to avoid to get uh, kinks in the binding. If you feed it up here and think you're in the binder, you're wrong. You gotta feed it up to the exiting point. So I'm pushing the fabric well into the fold at that point. Even if I have a few little wrinkles there, that means I'm pushing well, and it really should be on the edge well. Yet it is, see it's, it's nice and firm against that edge. Okay, when we get to the corner, I'll show you what we're going to do here. So this is rounded a little bit. 
So I'm going to see how it's wrinkled there. That's okay. And I'm going to take my time that doing this. And I'm uh, sorry if my fingers are in the way. I'm just trying to push it in there. So even though it's wrinkled and doesn't seem like it's flat, that's what we want. That's how you get around a corner. Now we're around and we just keep sewing around the perimeter doing that same thing until we reach the uh, beginning point and we'll show you what we do there again. So we're getting ready to come to the middle section or where we began. So there's the end of it and I'm going to trim my threads and I'm going to um, uh, use a hot knife at this juncture here and hot knife it here so that I don't have unraveling like I do there. Okay, so at this juncture, I'm going to sew over it by about an inch and I want to cut this with a hot knife and I want this cut to be perpendicular to the edges of the binding. Uh, this seals the edge. There we go. Now we can feed this in. And you do have to push this in because this is a little bit bulky here since it's going over the other end. And when I reach the end, then I'm going to do some reversing. This is a uh, swing away binder, so notice how the binder goes backwards. And then go forward a little bit. And there we are. We're going to install the uh, snap button and the socket onto the window shade now. We've installed an eighth inch hole cutter uh, that goes in a drill. This, this is a Sayrite drill hole cutter. This works phenomenally well to punch holes for snaps. And then we're going to put a cutting pad on the underside to prevent damage. And I'm going to put the snap uh, right about here, a little bit away from the corner to make sure that we're in the glass. Um, might just do it a little bit more like that. So now we have a perfect hole for our fastener. We're going to do that all four corners. For the middle section, I'm just going to put it down about the same distance. And you can measure if you want, but I'm just taking a stab at it. These are 1164 nickel plated brass snaps and these are the sockets. So these go into the fast into the fabric. You do not want a longer barrel than 1164 since we're only going through two layers of fabric. This is the underside, the patch is on the top. So we're going to stick the uh, barrel of the button through that hole like that, like so. So it protrudes out the top. We're going to put this this is the inexpensive uh, setter tool with a concave surface up. This is for eyelets. So it goes on like that. So it's directly underneath there. Put the socket on top. And then you typically hold on to this portion here. And it should basically fit in the socket like that. And then you give it a blow with a hammer or a mallet. I like to use a mallet until it's rolled over nicely. It's not. You can see that it's still got some way to go. Solid surface definitely works better. Now, if you roll it, see it still rolls. I want to, I'm going to put it on a leg, a table leg, which would prevent the bounce that I'm getting. And here's a leg right here. So if I put that on there. Now, doesn't roll at all. So it's installed perfectly. That's how we'll install all of the fasteners. This tool is aluminum and it's okay. It works only for nickel plated brass. This one uh, is made uh, out of steel. It's made by Sailrite and you can do nickel plated brass and stainless steel snaps with this one and it's much better. We're going to show you how this one works compared to that one. Same process. You've got concave this side, eyelet that side. We're on the concave side. Put the snap on that and run it through your hole. 
You do have to have a hole punched. Put your socket on top. And I'm not even over a table leg in this one. <laughs> Look at the roll. Still rolls a little bit, but see the barrel roll? It's nice. That is a beautiful snap installation. Doesn't roll at all. This tool is by far a better tool, but it costs more money. Next up, installing or mounting the snads on the RV. These are snads. This is a uh, actually a clear base. It's a silicone base with obviously a, a stud in the middle. And it's got a 3M VHB glue on the back side. And we're going to fasten these to each one of the snaps so that we know the correct position. And then we can take it out to the RV and stick it up. So first we want to clean the window well. Everywhere we put a snad, the window has to be cleaned thoroughly. You can use an alcohol prep pad for this as well. At first I'm using Windex. This is a 3M uh, Selene glass treatment. Really great for VHB 3M adhesives for glass. I highly recommend it. So what we want to do is we want to uh, squirt some of this on a rag. Then we want to go over the area where the faster is going to be used and we go in one direction with it like that. Put some more on the rag to the next. Wipe in one direction. Faster is going here. We already determined that by holding the panel up to it. If your snads are not being installed to glass, do not use Selene as a prep for the snad, but instead use Primer 94. It's available from Sayerite in an ampule or in an 8 ounce container. Once that's done, we'll take a clean rag and wipe in one direction over the top of it. I'm going to remove the backing on the snad on the top three fasteners. And it's definitely a good idea to get a second helper for this. Try not to touch the adhesive part. We'll pick up the backing later. After adhering the snad to the window, apply pressure for at least a minute. Firm pressure develops a better adhesive contact and okay. thus improves bonding strength. So don't touch the glass yet. Hold that this corner too. We want to try to position it and make it taut. And I'm going to stick it and hold here too. So we're going to do this for a little bit. The bond gets stronger with time. And if you have a heavy piece, you'll probably want to remove the piece because uh, the fabric's weight could uh, remove the snad. But this is very light. So I'm not going to remove the snad from this. You'd have to do it very carefully because you could remove the snad if you don't do it carefully. But after 72 hours, it should be 100% bond. After all the snads are installed, here's what our snap-on window screen looks like. In daylight hours, they provide privacy and they also cool down your RV by not allowing the sun to shine through. But yet from the inside, you can still see out, as seen here. Coming up next is the materials and tools list. We used a vinyl mesh material called Textiline Sunsure. You can also use Pfeifertex Plus fabric, available from Sailrite. If you enjoyed this video, click the link in the description below or at the icon at the top right to check out other projects in the Airstream Argosy Renovation Series. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.